I appreciate the opportunity to testify in support of both bills, but I did just want to say quickly, I would prefer this uh, 564 is more uniform, more consistent, easier to enforce approach uh, at, 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 by defining statewide uh, safe school zones as opposed to the individual uh, school districts. So I want uh, of the two bills, I figure both of them, but I would think this is a better approach. Thank you very much. Any questions? Very good. I have, uh, I'm going to spell the last name. It looks like it's S U E R E Z from Concord. Suarez, is it? All right, well, let's go with the next one. How about uh, Kimberly Moran? Um, I'm not here. He's, he's not here? How about um, Ted Well, He was here this morning. Ted Maltz. Maltz. There. Give, give me your last name again. It's Maltz, M A L T Z I E. Maltz, okay. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Maltz, for being here. Sorry, I'm afraid it's being what it is. Gotta love the weather. Yes. <coughs> I want to thank the committee very much for making the accommodation for everybody to have their say in this matter. That was very important and I appreciate it. Um, on this matter, I would like to hold up the Stony Douglas shooting in Florida, where Nicholas Cruz killed numerous people. It was a perfect storm of tragic events. <coughs> they knew he was an at-risk student. It was reported to teachers. It was reported to the administration. It was reported to the city police, the county police, the state police, and the FBI. Somebody dropped the ball. As a matter of fact, every single one of those organizations <laughs> dropped the ball. <clears throat> the biggest ball drop, and I will not speak to his um, lack of resolve or whether it was SOP from his department, was the school resource officer. He sat outside minutes waiting for backup. And I'm going to assume that it was his, his training that made him do that. I have the utmost respect for law enforcement. And I can see no other reason than he's got a family and he wants to go home to them too. So he waited for backup. While he waited, people died. Kids died. <coughs> Dozens of kids died while he waited for backup. School resource officers working alone are not sufficient. It isn't the answer. I think that New Hampshire to take a look at what the Manatee, <coughs> Manatee School for the Arts in Florida, which is right down the street from Stone and Douglas, what they did the other day. They hired two combat veterans to patrol their school armed with semi-automatic rifles, big scary black rifles because that's the firepower that's coming to bear on the school, and this is the amount of force that's required to defend against that threat. They're paying these two individuals a total of $50,000 a year, that's $25,000 apiece. I guarantee you that there are 2.1 million veterans in this country, and that you would have no problem filling these positions for every school in this state. There's many of us who would do it for free, this is a solution. Train people who are willing to run towards the gunfire to stop someone who is killing kids. That's all I got for you. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions about the presenter? Thank you very much for again testifying. I'd now I'd like to call um, Melissa Heimdall, please. And on deck is uh, Mr. Liss. Welcome to House Education. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Myler and committee members. I was not going to testify today, uh, but after hearing so many stories, I felt that it was imperative that I make a couple of my own personal points. My name is Melissa Heimbach. I live in Concord with my husband and three school-aged children. I will be as brief as possible. 
I will not reiterate some of the excellent arguments of those who came before me, and I will try and just be as quick as I can. A dear friend of mine was murdered on July 3rd of 1991. Kirsten was shot and killed by a gun. She was killed right after she graduated from college. She was going to be a teacher. And the pain and trauma of her death have reverberated and stretched across her family, her friends, her school, and her community for over 27 years. Gun violence is insidious and long-lasting. My brief second point is that I taught first graders when I was younger. There is no way that guns should be in a first grade classroom, or any classroom for that matter. Just imagine a gun in a room full of Legos, letters, Lincoln Logs, and little impulsive six-year-olds. This is a tragic accident waiting to happen. And on a personal note, my children have gone through these lockdown drills that you've heard so much about. They've gone through them at the Christopher McCullough Elementary School, Runlet Middle School, and Concord High School. And I will tell you that my kids come home shaken, crying, and visibly upset. These drills themselves leave lasting trauma, anxiety, nightmares, and an incredible emotional mess that parents have to clean up. <coughs> Can't we make some changes to protect our children's physical and mental health? I believe that the bills that we heard this morning and some of the ones down the hall this afternoon are a beginning. So I spoke today for my kids, my schools, my state, and for my dear friend Kirsten Davis a bright and kind young woman who would have made an exceptional teacher. So please vote ought to pass on HB 564. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here. Are, is there any questions of our presenter? Thank you very much. There's um, Mr. List in the, in the room. Uh, so we'll go 